2022 looks to be a massive year for superhero movies. So today I'm gonna stop and rank all 16 2022 comic book or superhero movies based off my excitement. So let's talk about it. Hi, my name is Sean and I love to talk about movies and TV way too much. With that in mind, go ahead and join me down below in the comment section. Share your ranking of the upcoming comic book movies based off of your excitement. My list isn't the right list, it's just my list and I would love to see yours. And as I go into this, I tried to do a lot of research and look for all of the direct-to-video and streaming movies that are coming, but I might have missed something. If I did, let me know about it down below in the comment section. And also some of these don't have release dates yet, so they might not come out this year or other ones that don't have release dates might end up coming out this year. Keep all of that in mind and let's get started. In last place, Green Lantern Beware My Power. This is a DC animated film that was announced at DC Fandom, but we don't know any cast, plot, or crew details. And so all we know is animated Green Lantern film. I missed the previous Green Lantern films, so this one comes in last place. Number 16, Teen Titans Go vs. DC Superhero Girls. Now, I actually liked Teen Titans Go to the movie, but I've never watched DC Superhero Girls, and I don't really watch Teen Titans Go either. And so watching the kind of teaser that they put, did put out there, it just felt like a crossover episode, except it's going to be feature length. And so it's basically two TV shows that I don't watch crossing over in a movie. So until I see an actual trailer that sells me on something more than this, not all that interesting. Number 15, Battle of the Super Sons. This is another DC project that was announced at DC Fandom, and it's the first computer animated film from Warner Brothers Animation. Now, that's really what kind of intrigues me a little bit because I've watched a lot of the Warner Brothers animation direct-to-video films. The two lead characters here of the sons of Batman and Superman battling it out or whatever they're doing, that's not of great interest to me. I'm just kind of interested in what will a direct-to-video computer animated film look like from these studios. You also might have noticed that at the beginning of the video, I said there were going to be 16 films, and then I started with number 17. That's because when I looked at my notes for the bottom two and did a little bit of research on them, since starting to record this video, I found this additional film and snuck it in at number 15. Next up, Catwoman Hunted. Now, this movie comes out next month, and we do have a trailer for it. Basically, it's a quippy heist comedy starring Catwoman. Darling, I love your costume. Hold on to that one, love, or I might just steal him away. And when I first saw the synopsis for it, I was kind of like, okay, I don't know that this will be for me. I'm not terribly into anime. It has Batwoman in it. I don't really care about the Batwoman character. But then when I watched the trailer, it was more fun and high energy than I was expecting. So I actually got a little bit more excited for it. Number 13, Morbi is the movie that just won't come out. As of just a few days ago, it was delayed for like the seventh time and now it comes out April 1st, which of all the days to move this movie that's already become kind of the butt end of a joke for all of its delays. We've been waiting for this movie for two years or not waiting for this movie for two years and then they drop it on April Fool's Day, solidifying its position as kind of a joke in certain senses. And I think that's kind of the problem here. It was always going to kind of be a mid-tier comic book movie, B-movie. It was never meant to be this big, ma massive blockbuster. But when you keep delaying it, and we've been watching these same trailers for literally two years now, it just kind of diminishes the excitement. It's kind of like, okay, yeah, whatever. That th If it ever comes out, I guess we'll see it. And honestly, the thing I'm most excited for in this film is to figure out what universe does it take place in? What's going on with all these little hints and teases about the Venom, the Garfield, the Maguire, as well as the MCU being all being teased in the trailers for this film? The actual plot itself and the character, it's like, Okay, sure, I'm sure that'll be fine. Number 12, Merry Little Batman. This is an animated Christmas special headed to Cartoon Network where six-year-old Damian Wayne uh, takes on the mantle of Little Batman to protect his home from the rogues gallery invading the Wayne Manor or something like that. We don't have a trailer. We don't know too many details besides that synopsis. It sounds like Batman meets Home Alone and Generally speaking, I thought this one might be lower on the list, but when I read, read that synopsis, it sounded like the sort of thing that my family will probably watch each December. Something that's just silly enough as characters we recognize just enough to be a film that we regularly watch around the holidays. Will it be great cinema? Of course not. 
will be something my family watches Probably. Then we have Black Panther Wakanda Forever. Now I feel bad that this one isn't higher up on the list. I thoroughly enjoyed the first film. And then because of the tragic passing of Chadwick Boseman, it just feels like they were dealt a really bad hand. And all of the discussion of where the plot might be headed, all the murmurs about what's going on with the production, I just see a lot of red flags, a lot of things that make me nervous about this film. I could be won over when we get a synopsis, when we get a trailer, maybe I'll understand the pitch, the concept of where they're going with this film, but without being able to have T'Challa front and center, I just don't know where this film is going. And they haven't said anything yet that's made me go, man, I can't wait to see that. So I'm very nervous for this film and I would love for it to be great. I would love for it to be great. I just haven't heard anything that makes me think it will be as of yet, besides trusting the creative team behind the scenes, but they haven't said anything specifically about what they're trying to do. So all I know is the constraints on the production, and that has me nervous. Bringing us into the top 10, DC League of Super Pets. Now, this is one that they put a teaser out for it, I don't know, like nine months ago, and it just seemed like very base level humor and a movie where once again, The Rock and Kevin Hart are teaming up for the one billionth time. And then they put out a second trailer shortly after DC Fandom, and it was a full trailer, and I thought it was a, had a little bit more of a wit, a little bit more of a cleverness to it, and I kind of dug it a little bit. I also know what my kids like, and anything that involves cute pets, they love, like yesterday, my daughter did a back-to-back -back viewing after school of Beverly Hills Chihuahua 2 and Beverly Hills Chihuahua 3. So if she can sit through that double feature, this is going to be right up her alley. So sometimes I, my excitement is based off of how much fun will I have watching this movie with my kids. And I'm sure they'll have a blast watching it and I'll have a blast watching them have a blast. Number nine, Black Adam. And from here on out on the list, these are all movies I'm legitimately excited for. A few of them I do have some reservations, but I'm legitimately very excited about something in each of the next nine films. In the case of this movie, The Rock signed on to play Black Adam back in 2014, eight years ago. And we've been waiting and waiting for this film. Finally, it's happening. Now, some of the things I'm actually more excited about with this film is one of them is the director, uh, Jamie Collette Sarah. I'm sure I mispronounced his name. He, he's a guy that directed like 1,000 Liam Neeson action thrillers, but he has a unique style to the way he does things that's more interesting than the movies that he's made a lot of the time. And they did, him and The Rock did Jungle Cruise this past year. They seem to have liked working together. So I'm interested to see what he'll bring to the comic book movie genre. Likewise, Pierce Brosnan is Dr. Fate. Very excited to see what that's going to look like. And then it just looks like it's going to have a bunch of weird, crazy mythology to it. So um, it seems different in a genre that we've seen a lot of movies in, obviously, over the last 10 years. Next up, Aquaman and the Lost Kingdom. Whereas with... Black Adam, I really don't know what to expect in light of the long delayed production as well as the nature of the mythology that they've teased. When it comes to Aquaman 2, I kind of do know what to expect because James Wan is returning behind the camera, the cast is there, and so you kind of know what to expect from it, and that's both, both the biggest asset and the biggest... I don't know, thing holding that one back of like, oh, I've already kind of seen this movie, and they in the little behind the scenes stuff they put out at DC Fandom, they haven't necessarily teased how it's bigger or different. It's like, so I'm like, yeah, I'm kind of excited to see more adventures in that space from James Wan. But at the same time, I'm also like, you know, I've also seen that before, so I'm not as excited about it as I, I might have been otherwise. Number seven, Batgirl. Now this is gonna be an HBO Max original, and there's several things about this movie that has me very excited. Right off the bat, they got the directors from Bad Boys for Life, which I thought was the best of the Bad Boys movie, handled the characters really well, but also handled the action really nicely. So bringing that to a superhero story that I'm assuming is gonna be more grounded and mid-budget, that seems like the right team to tackle a property like this. 
Add to the mix, J.K. Simmons is returning as Commissioner Gordon, and so we barely have gotten to see any of him as Commissioner Gordon, so seeing a lot more of him, I'm excited about that. And then we also have Michael Keaton returning as Batman after The Flash. I don't even know what that means, but I'm excited to see how that is going to play out exactly. And then Brendan Fraser is the villain in the film. And so a bunch of those little details have me excited. I hope that this is very much a mid-budget action film that's not trying to do all the big gigantic spectacle that you see in a 200 million dollar blockbuster i want some of these kind of 50 million dollars 75 million dollar superhero action movies street level that's what i'm hoping this is i love the cast i really dig the directors that they brought in for it too then we have the flash and this is one that if you'd asked me a month or two ago, it probably would have been top three because The Flash has always had a very special place in my heart. I grew up watching the old 1990s Flash TV show uh, that, I, that I absolutely loved. And then likewise, they're going to have Michael Keaton in this movie and kind of my time period starting getting and falling in love with comic book movie nerddom stuff was Batman 1989. He was the Batman of my childhood that meant so much to me. And I watched my VHS tape of Batman 89 as well as Batman Returns on loop continuously forever. And so the idea that they're doing a multiverse flash story with Michael Keaton coming in has me so excited. They put out that little teaser at DC Fandom. Loved the little teases they had there. This is also a movie that has had a very troubled production they kept bringing on directors and they kept dropping off for years. People come in, try and make it work, and then they drop out. And then this last week, all these rumors came out that they're using this movie to try and erase the Snyderverse and erase Henry Cavill and erase Batfleck. I'm really not crazy about that idea. Ezra Miller came out and said, no, no, that's not the case. That's not what we're doing. Those rumors are totally false. I don't really trust actors when it comes to things like that. And Ezra Miller certainly isn't an actor that I immediately go, that's a guy that I trust when he says something. So my feelings about this one are very torn. There's a bunch of nostalgia things that make me so excited for it with the character and everything, finally getting a movie. And then at the same time, these rumors are true about erasing the Snyderverse terrible idea that will not go well for them if they actually do that. In fifth place, Thor Love and Thunder. Now, I thought Taika Waititi just injected this franchise with the surge of adrenaline that it needed. He brought everything to life with bigger, bolder characters, brighter colors, and then a wicked, sharp, fun sense of humor. So more in that world sounds great. Likewise, teaming up Thor with the Guardians of the Galaxy for the Asgardians of the galaxy. I don't know how much they're actually going to be in this movie, but even if they have a small but distinct presence, I would love to see more of that kind of dynamic taking place. Adding Christian Bale himself into this movie seems like a big deal because he can do whatever he wants. For the last decade since playing Batman, it seems like he's been going for more prestige. And the fact that he decided to join this one seems like a very good sign However, when the one kind of plot point that we really know about it a little bit is Jane Foster becomes Lady Thor, I'm not really interested in that at all. Uh, I get that it has comic book roots and all of that. Those sorts of plot lines aren't terribly interesting to me. So that has me a little bit nervous. When we get a trailer, maybe it'll win me over a little bit more or maybe it will confirm my concerns. We shall see. In fourth place, Samaritan. Now, this isn't a comic book movie, but it is a superhero story starring Sylvester Stallone as a retired superhero and his neighbor boy kind of discovers who he is. It's from the director of Overlord, my favorite World War II zombie movie that's ever come out, like a real cool movie. So this being his follow-up with Stallone, my favorite actor of all time in a superhero story. I like these sorts of like retired superhero story. Come, retired superhero comes out of retirement type stories tend to be my kind of thing. Make it Stallone, even more my thing. And this is one that's been delayed and delayed and delayed. It was supposed to come out a long time ago. Like everything else, COVID caused some problems, but Stallone had been like Instagramming his experience filming the film. So I am very excited to check this one out finally. Real quick before I give you my top three, remember to join me down below in the comment section. Share your excitement level for the upcoming comic book movie and superhero movies of 2022 and let me know if I missed anything that might be coming out this year. Also, if you don't know, I have a second YouTube channel called Sean Chandler Plus where I kind of cover smaller, more niche things, more relaxed, less editing, kind of more my personality coming through a little bit more. So some of the direct-to-video movies that I talked about in this video, I would be more likely to cover on that channel. And so if you're interested 
interest in kind of more niche stuff, a little bit more laid back, consider subscribing to my second channel as well. In third place, Spider-Man Across the Universe Part 1. Now, I absolutely loved the first Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse. I thought it was so creative as an animated film, as a superhero story, and as a Spider-Man story. It was great on every front and merged all of those together to create something very unique and interesting. It's one of the most comic booky move comic booky movies ever made in that they used the animation style to bring to life kind of this punch my microphone, bring to life this animated style that feels like a comic book brought to life with the words on the screen and everything. It's a great, it's multiple great Spider-Man stories all at once. And the idea that we're expanding this world and going across the multiverse, whatever that means, whatever that's going to look like, and all of these different Spider-Men that are going to join in with Spider-Man 2099, the fact that it is a two-part story, all of that has me so excited for this one. Our runner-up, Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness. Now, I have been so excited for more Doctor Strange ever since Infinity War. When you started having him interact with Tony Stark, I was like, man, they figured out this character. I want more of this. And then we got those episodes of him in What If? And I just thought they were phenomenal. They were the best episodes of that show. And then we got the teaser trailer for this one at the end of Spider-Man um, No Way Home. And you saw the ties to what and if I was like, man, they're doing this. So Wanda's coming in. You got weird, freaky Lovecraftian creatures. And then all of these rumors and speculation that they did reshoots for about six weeks at the end of last year in order to bring in more cameos, more tie-ins. All of that has me so excited for this movie on every level. Now, I, I hope it does play like... Spider-Man No Way Home, where all of the appearances, all the characters feel earned, they feel right, they feel justified, not just like, hey, look, it's Hugh Jackman. Hey, look, it's Chris Evans as Human Torch. I hope it's not just that stuff, or hey, look, it's Tom Cruise as Iron Man, Tony Stark. I hope it's not just that finger pointing at someone being like, I recognize that person. If it's plot based, if it makes sense, I am so excited for all the weirdness, all the cameos, all that fun stuff. And most importantly, Sam Raimi, of all people, returning to direct a Marvel movie. But of course, coming in in first place is The Batman. Batman is one of my top two favorite comic book movie characters of all time. If Batfleck couldn't write and direct a Batman movie, Matt Reeves probably would have been the guy that I said was my number one pick to replace him. He is so good at directing stories that have layers, complexity, and tragedy, while also being ridiculous, but not coming off ridiculous. If he can do Dawn of the Planet of the Apes and have apes on horsebacks, dual wielding machine guns, battling a tank, and make it not seem silly, he's the guy that can do a very comic booky Gotham but not make it come off silly. And that's what these trailers have come off like. They they have the right tone, the right atmosphere that are grounded enough, dark enough, while not feeling like they're just ripping off Christopher Nolan films. They're pulling inspiration from Seven. And so it's a detective story. The action feels vicious and brutal. It feels like a lived in universe. I'm digging everything they've shown us, the crew, the cast, all of it, the music, can't wait to see this movie. So it comes in at number one. If you enjoyed this video, I've got more end of the year, beginning of the year videos. You can check them out right over there. Thank you so much for watching and keep talking movies and TV too much in 2022.